So I'm gonna make a question here since you said like you had to make certain concessions with like the development process. How many things did you end up cutting? Well, we ended up cutting the game into three parts, really. So it was going to be this big, long thing, and uh, that, then we had to cut it into three episodes. So originally it was not going to be in the episodic order. Was there any features or anything you needed to cut or possibly redistribute from, like, the first episode to later ones? Like, and the first episode... Hmm? Go ahead. Sorry, like, go ahead. Like, in the first episode, you have uh, Buck's device for instance, and the matches as, like, gameplay things you can tweak around with. Were there other things you originally had in mind for the player being able to do to sort of feel empowered and less helpless? Um, yes, there were some other things, and those will come into play for sure. Um, there were some other segments, like, um, at the end of episode one, originally you were supposed to get sort of recaptured by the grandchildren. You go back to that bedroom, and the bedroom sort of drops from the ceiling and then goes along this track. It takes you to this, like, prison. And then you meet all of the five elder siblings. Um, they, they play a major role in episode two. Like the ones you see the names of, where they're like, I've been good. Like, yeah, Cornelia. Fair Day, Plum, I also Pogo. found it really interesting that Buck was immune to Buck's device. Like, I tried using it once, and I'm like, oh, right. It's, it's his device. It would make sense that it wouldn't work on him. In episode two, we even explore sort of what that technology is and why Buck has special access to it. Stuff like that. It all comes together. It's all part of the narrative. Okay, so there's like a lot to look forward to for the next episode. And, um, that it's Buck's, Buck's machinery that is keeping grandmother sedated, so... I mean, I still love the fact that he was like, I'm the only one that's allowed to kill her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he holds a claim. I mean, it's good stuff. Very, very nice and hinged. Cool, thanks. I mean, a lot of that, a lot of that writing, like, was, wasn't all me. Uh, our sound guy, actually, like, played a huge part in sort of creating the soundscape. If you ever play again, you know, try it with, with headphones oh, um, and just uh, like really just listen to the sound. I'm actually playing with headphones, part of a recording equipment. So Sound guy, Ryan Buckley, he and I have worked together since the beginning of both of our careers in the game industry. We've always sort of worked on mods together and side projects and uh, we worked on chivalry together. Um, his soundscapes are probably the best in the industry. I mean, like, I think, like, I know that's really cocky to say, but to me, they're they're better than a lot of AAA companies. Like, they, he really, he knows how to tell a real story with, with just audio and, like, make that story, like, organic and sort of, like, reactive and in-world. <laughs> yeah, like, one of the um, things so, with that countdown you had, where, like, you're on the bridge and the grandchildren are coming... Except the countdown's actually not when the door opens. I know. <laughs> I was like, uh... Oh. oh right. Well, that's a design thing. I know, that was good. Because I was, but like, he... freaking out and, like, oh, my God, they're going to catch me. It's like, he's still counting. I'm like, the door's open. I'm like, son of a bitch. Unreliable. Everybody's unreliable here. Well, yeah, because I, I noticed that the, um... That, like, all the music kind of sounded like it was very like it, it sounded like it was being not only was it vintage music in its like sound is sound design but the way that it sounded also sounded like it was coming through vintage devices yes so like, like on the yeah and that's definitely part of that part when he's speaking he's doing the countdown it sounds like it's over the speaker it sounds like in this, it's in this giant cavern speakers kind of breaking down yeah there's like, like this that guy. very different tone to when he's speaking over like the intercom system because you hear them in person down? talking and then when you hear like them on the announcement things there's that yeah. very different for security reasons <laughs> This is a time block. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, and then you've got the bell. I don't know if you noticed during that part. So you've got the music that plays when the grandchildren come near you, 
And then you've got this bell that starts sounding. It's like a, like a big church bell somewhere in the town. Yeah. yeah and it yeah. really creates this like intense, like your like build up to this, this sort of short chase scene. And that's all audio that does, that creates that pacing there. So he, he deserves full credit for that. Yeah. Like there's a lot of great ambience in the game. That was, like, just a thing for this entire thing was, like, it's a very ambient experience as a game. Good. Yeah, yeah to listen, to, to if you play, the, I, I would say to, like, anybody watching who plays this game, to play it without the sound, to play it, like, on mute or whatever, you're doing yourself a huge injustice. Yeah, and I mean... <laughs> Honestly, Failing. even playing it with low sound, like I'm currently doing it, would be heartbreaking had I not already gone through <laughs> the game, because the dialogue for the characters and the music all just blends together to really make this trippy and unpleasant... It, 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 it yeah. Where is it? Where is Good. it? <laughs> Where is it? Is it like chocolate? Or meat. I prefer meat. <laughs> oh yeah, us like also going over like their yeah, so, uh, culinary tastes. So I like <laughs> was that like um were you, were you are you and I if you're not willing to say yes or no that's fine um but were you attempting to imply that they were eating the people's insides once they, you know, removed them? I'm not telling. I'm I not mean, on. that was the impression I got, especially because of, like, it sort of fit organically into the process they'd created. Because that fucking chair. <laughs> and and uh, <laughs> I was like, oh, I mean, I guess waste not, want not. <laughs> yeah, why not? Maybe they're making tennis rackets with their intestines. I, you know, I, what, you said that, and all I could think of is maybe they're making violins. You <laughs> gross. Well, no, because old school violins, the strings yeah. are made of cat gut. Cat gut. Cat gut. They lace their shoes with it. I. What shoes? What feet? I'm actually still a little bit curious about how they hold anything, and I was like, I had this nightmarish mental image of like, their their bones are collapsed inside their body and just stretch out when they need to actually grab something. <laughs> That's they're, great. They're eating tuna, apparently. Yeah, somehow I'm like, how are they opening those cans? <laughs> they're just like, may maybe it's like psychic powers or something. I don't know. They, they're clearly able to use some of these switches and other things despite no visible appendages. And I was wondering if that was going to end up being a plot point. <laughs> or if that was just, nah, they're just creepers. Don't think about it. Well, <laughs> I'm going to try and answer that question in episode two. Okay. So, again, one of those wonderful things we get to find out. <laughs> it's not that important, really. No, nah, it was just more of a curiosity thing because I like knowing how things work. So I'll give you a hint. I can stop picturing them as. A well. uh, hint would be that you know you can tell some of these structures are kind of in disrepair. Yeah. So, actually, so that is the thing. How long has this been going on? Is that, like, touched on? Definitely touched on. And if you look at some of the stuff we've been posting recently on our Facebook and Twitter and stuff, you, you, you can get some info on that. Excellent. So let me direct you. To the Twitter, which we'll, we can actually post those links in the description. Yeah, yeah. Just to... Uh, the annotations anymore, so... N nice and inform well, people I, of everything. Video, but yeah, they will definitely go in the descriptions. Man, Piotr, you creeper. To our Facebook, Piotr. 
He's a, he's a guy. Yeah, he's just waving to me oh, right are, now. Are we, we going to see Piotr again? Uh, I, I'm oh, currently I sitting in front oh, of Piotr, just looking at the, the, the back of his sockets. I want to tell you what is in store for Piotr. See, okay, so we do get to see him again because I felt really guilty for what happened. Because I was like, uh... Oh, man, yeah. I mean, I can't imagine anything as good is going to be happening to him, but... You know, actually, he still looked better off than we did by, by the end of this episode. Well, no. May, and when you see him, it may teach you something more about the masks. Interesting. <laughs> and if you look at our Twitter and Facebook, <laughs> you can get another uh, bread crumb towards what I mean by that. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go take a peek at that while uh, <laughs> right now. Oh wow, wow! Just just abandon me here. All right, so I'm gonna toss it in <laughs> here again. Then is so. How many new gameplay features? Are, like, are you intending on having, like, the gameplay continue to sort of grow dynamically like it did in this episode in the future episodes so that the player has a sort of slow sense of, like, empowerment in a larger repertoire? Or are you actually going to go and sort of less is more type approach? I, I couldn't give that away, but I can tell you that we are going to experiment with some other mechanics in episode two. So if you look at episode one, like the sort of core mechanic kind of changes as you move through the game. And uh, it's not, we don't want it to be the sort of game where like you, you learn how to play it and you get used to sort of how the gameplay feels and you just get into that like... Groove uh, of... Yeah, that like groove. I got very <laughs> aggressive near the end of episode one because I started using Buck's device to murder these guys all masks. I got really familiar with like oh wait they die from fall damage all right guys <laughs> let's go and i proceeded to cliff them that was said too uh both uh benevolent and benevolent malevolent um uh, yes the answer is it, gameplay will continue to be varied and will continue to build on the stakes of the plot picture of plum here <laughs> is, that clear? is that a clear enough answer definitely yeah, so, um, looking well, forward to that i see what you mean when you say kind of uh alluding to the timeline and stuff just looking at like this picture of plum yes oh lots of clues I, in the face i'm gonna need to look at that later i think awesome <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you know, I think that's why the doors don't have knobs, actually. They don't have hands. The doors don't have knobs. <laughs> also, I love the, uh, don't, d the, where is it? Uh, great job. Grandmother loves you. Ten at a time only. Stand on your mark. Wait for the bell. <laughs> Fun. And it has the little, like, please don't duck under, do not crouch under bars, which they can't do. <laughs> and it's like, the guy, sl like, you control the guy by, like, crouching under the bars behind him to force him to turn around. <laughs> hey, buddy. Yeah, that guy's screwed once he's in the bars. So the elder grandchildren don't... Uh, don't look like the other ones. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, I'll look into that so I can make some commentary Anyways, yeah. on that, so that later. No, that is, that is really interesting, yeah. I will definitely uh, be putting links to that in the Facebook and stuff. Sweet. <clears throat> and that all connects to a blog, too, if you really want to dig deep. I mean, I, I've dug deep in a few things. <laughs> ah, and yeah, there's another picture of the uh, uterus with the two snakes coiled around, which is like almost a catechus symbol, too. And I'm wonder like, is that also meant or is it more just towards the uterus and serpent thing is that uh is that on our facebook the 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 uh the crest i haven't found it yet if it is 
Yeah, where are you seeing the cross? Oh, he's playing the game. That's what he's playing. I'm yeah, in the yeah. game, like, because right, right. it gives us something as a background. So, and I came across the crest again of it's like a little, it's almost a shield, but it's with the positioning of the snakes and like the sort of shield in the middle. It's very, I found it to be like, this is just a uterus. As soon as I looked at it, I was like, not a happy one either, because there's like that bloody aspect to it from the snakes like squeezing it. <laughs> and I was, just, and I was like, there's a lot of vibes there, because like I took a class on symbology, and so I was like, I, I looked at him like catechus possibly, because there's the two snakes coiled around in the sense of it, would it be the rod of Hermes or the catechus? Either way, it's the, the, the staff that has, like, or Rod of Asclepius. Yeah, I don't know which one please. it is. Anyways, it has, like, the two snakes Hurts. coiled up, and then they go to the either end. And I was like, get some vibes of that there. But then, so there's, like, a motherhood <laughs> thought to it, but then you have the snakes, which are, like, a very toxic aspect. And they're not happy either. <laughs> Thank God, you're psychoanalyzing me here. <laughs> I'm not like sure I'm you. I'm not sure you, unless like this says something about you, in which case I'm worried. <laughs> so, uh, like, so the narwhals are gonna be important to this story, I gather. Oh, those poor fucking narwhals! We came across <laughs> like the pile yeah. of horns. Oh yeah. yeah. Poor narwhals. Actually, yeah, no. I, I, is there any other entities in the game that we're also going to be introduced to in the second thing? Like, new players, faction groups, or things? Like, yes. we've met the ghosts, the bats, the grandchildren. <laughs> Grand um, Buck's yes, sort of his yes. own thing. <laughs> yep. I love his hat, by the way. <laughs> the dunce cap. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you know, which I read the words on that dunce cap. Like, it's not the typical dunce cap. Yeah. He's all beat up, too. He's got a black eye. Uh, I mean, I can guess why they're super unhappy with him, but seriously. Oh man! Hey well, Sean, they don't, to, they don't seem to generally get along with each other in general. Siblings. The mandatory family time that doesn't seem to go well. I was a good boy. <laughs> 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 Them talking about how long they were on the toilet was one of my favorite notes, actually. <laughs> Oh, man. So, yeah, like, I definitely enjoyed a lot of the surreal and sort of very human -y aspects of them. Like, Sean was mentioning, like, the uncanny, uncanny valley aspect. I found that less in their appearance and more in just sort of the way they communicate. <laughs> right. Yeah, it doesn't match how they look. Yeah, which I thought was actually really neat just because of that vast dissonance. Oh man, I, I didn't actually cause them all to freak out this time, so I'm able to get that fucking note in the bathroom without getting a game over for once. You're back in the house now? Oh yeah, I'm back in the house. I'm still like, have I missed the secret room? <laughs> <sighs> so, um... Is there going to be any different differences in the way the narration is sort of going to be translated to the players like are yes. you, so you do have new plans for how the story is going to be put across to the players in the uh oh, what do you mean well okay so for this episode you sort of have like the notes there was exploring there was the house itself like is there any thing you're going to be sort of also this is actually something i found heartbreaking I did not find a way to be able to review the notes after I finished the game. When I actually tried to read the notes, like, in the menu, 
it it buggered oh, really? up for me. Oh really? Oh. Uh, Sean, Sorry. you remember that, right? Yeah, they started stacking up on top of each other, and all the text got like overlaid itself. And I oh. couldn't find like a general like it would have been nice to have a menu overall. So after you're done the game, you can just like overlook the notes you found because a it'd be nice to be able to read them and sort of piece the story together, and b it also would have been sort of helpful just to see which ones you'd missed for us completionists out there. Right. So I'm confused. So you should be able to see your notes from the menu. Uh, uh, that is an option. Okay, yeah, yeah. it was messing up for me before. It's actually currently it not. Up. Oh wait, no, no, it messed up now. So if really? you click on a higher note, like, ugh. So if you click on a note and then you click on a note that's lower it before hitting escape and exiting out of a note, it messes the notes up and permanently glues them to your screen. So you can't get rid of that one note until you like exit the game. And it That's just... a really good bug. Thanks for finding that. It's, yeah. it's, it's tough. This is what you asked what was tough and like we're a really small team and uh, this, it's just, you I know, mean, it's so hard to get all the bugs ironed this, out this all happens. the time. I break games consistently. Like <laughs> Sean's just like, uh... Writing new bugs for all the time. Well, that's a good find though. We'll have to fix that. And yeah, just like that ability to like out of even not even in a save game, just walk through all those different notes and review them. Uh, oh god, this is so yeah, I can't navigate my menu anymore <laughs> because the notes just plastered there. Ah, uh, I'm sorry. It's fine. It's fine. Um, but yeah, that was like, I one of run, my. I have a new baby. Baby is uh, baby's only three three weeks old now. Three weeks old today, actually. Oh Rats. wow! And uh, it's my thanks. But it's my shift to take over and watch the baby, so my wife can get some sleep. But uh, it's been really fun talking with you guys, and I'm really glad you guys are like so enthusiastic about all by lullaby. That's so awesome. Oh dear God! Oh, I I pissed them off now. <laughs> oh, it's not good. I was so Ooh. stealthy, and then they all flipped their shit on me. <laughs> We're definitely looking forward to episode two, and uh, yeah, like we'll, we'll definitely be playing it and getting it on our channel as soon as. Uh, Great. Yeah. yeah, I, I suppose. Uh, have any cool. other queries or anything on your end, Sean? No, no. Um, yeah, I just. Cool. I, I, I yeah. Enjoy the game. Yeah. All right. So uh, definitely grateful, though, for you taking the time to actually address our uh, questions and all this. Sure thing. It's fun. And, and yeah, for those uh, watching, yeah. Uh, parting words, I suppose, Sean? Um, yeah. Um, you know, as always, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll be putting a, uh, a link in the description to... Uh, Ape Laws, uh, Facebook, Twitter, there. If they have a YouTube channel, I'll, I'll get that on there. And be yeah. sure to give them, you know, a like and a follow, and and check out their game as well. And yeah, we we look forward to hearing more great things. And this video just ended with me getting surrounded and mulched. <laughs> mulched. <laughs> Huffed? Surrounded and huffed, maybe? <laughs> I I'm always going to blame right. you for that, Sean. Good talking to you. You got a good night. You yeah, too. You too.